Welcome all. Uh, this is going to be perhaps a slightly uh, long video uh, from what I normally try to do, um, but I think it's uh, important because I'm covering quite a bit of ground uh, today on a specific uh, camera and I uh, just wanted to be as informative as possible um, so I don't sort of miss out on any features that uh, are relevant. Now, in a video just uh, recently I sort of made a comment about uh, my dislike of action cams and that sort of really stemmed from owning quite a few uh, fairly crappy ones that uh, took uh, low quality images even though they were supposed to be 4k and so on and had all sorts of problems uh, uh, with them I was never satisfied with the the images that they produced so I sort of stayed away from them for quite a while I own an Olympus TG5 uh, which is a great little camera but it's been very very frustrating uh, in a number of respects uh, because it only has a uh, seven minute recording time in uh, 4k um, the app that comes with it, as I've spoken before, is absolute rubbish. You can't uh, start stop the camera um, with the uh, the app itself. You can only take photos, and uh, so it's been a bit of a failure. And I've been sort of thinking about getting something better that enables me to uh, take uh, video in car and out outside the car that can record good quality video that can go for quite a uh, lengthy period of time uh, so I don't have to uh, get out of the vehicle and stop start uh, the recorder all the time and I uh, started looking around I'm not a big fan of GoPro for whatever reason I don't know why but I just don't want to get a GoPro and I started looking at the uh, Insta360 uh, range of cameras and after uh, doing a lot of research um, going through a lot of uh, YouTube crap uh, again um, I hate some of these reviews that come out um, they're always doing the same thing over and over again and uh, often not all overly informative and uh, so at the end of the day after doing a lot of things and finding a couple of uh, minor uh, ch channels which uh, had a little bit more information I bit the bullet and uh, bought myself uh, an Insta360 uh, one inch edition that's the, uh, the Leica uh, lens model and uh, it's turned out to be uh, a very, very good camera. I really do uh, like it. Uh, we've had some very crappy weather weather at the moment. We've been in lockdown again because of COVID, so I haven't been able to put it to use. We had to cancel a trip, uh, which was going to be the the uh, proving ground for this uh, for the first time, and that had to be called off. So, uh, unfortunately, um, I don't have anything really that I'm going to put up as far as video goes at the moment. Uh, I'll follow up on that, but I uh, just want to talk about the features and uh, and how I sort of uh, put it together, uh, so to speak. Um, I'm going to do a close-up uh, of all of the things that I've got here so that you can do a top-down view of how I put it all together and uh, what I've used. But basically, um, it's the one-inch model, which in the basic format, I've got a small rig cage for it that uh, uh, is much, much better than the, the one that was supplied. And I'll just keep my notes in here so that... And one thing I actually uh, forgot to mention, I don't really consider this as an action cam in the same sense of GoPros and all the rest. It, it certainly is sold as that, but uh, I see it more of a, as a crash cam, car cam and so on, because the way this sort of works is, uh, in my view, more geared towards that, at least for my use it's going to be, uh, that whereas the Insta360 uh, 1R versions with the uh, 360 view and so on are very much action cams for snowboarding motorbike riding bicycling and so on I think this is just designed for something slightly different and in my view it really does work very well in that case um, so that's basically uh, um, why I got the one inch mod version I wanted the higher quality because one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to crop in and I've the test shots I've done it crops in beautifully. Um, I can really get into the 2.4 to 1 aspect ratios and not lose quality because it uh, shoots at uh, 5.3K uh, with a 1 inch sensor so the quality is good. You can do that uh, quite uh, easily versus the 2 thirds sensor that you find in uh, most small cameras, action cams and so on. Um, the only other competitor to this would be the Sony RX uh, uh, what is it, the 3.0 or something like that, RX0 version 3. Um, but it had a lot of issues that uh, um, I'm not going to go into, but uh, kept me away from buying that. They were both about the same price, but uh, I just didn't like the uh, the things that the Sony did. So that was my sort of reasons for getting it, was because I wanted to use it as a uh, car cam. And uh, that's why I got a cage, and I'll speak about uh, how I used the cage uh, uh, shortly. But uh, one of the things that attracted me to the, the Insta360 uh, 1R is the modularity. Um, unlike uh, cameras like the GoPro, you buy the model uh, and a month later they've got a new model uh, 
uh, intimated and uh, they keep jumping. I think they're up to version 10 shortly. And uh, whereas with this, uh, if there's something comes up as an improvement, uh, you could get a module for it rather than buying a whole new camera kit. The battery packs you can get for it are different sizes depending on what sort of needs you have. And uh, the camera adaptability is, uh, is quite vast. So that was one of the things attracted to me. There's been a lot of talk over the years of modular cameras. Um, this sort of uh, is one of the few that's been about, uh, I think uh, Rico made one, I think it was Rico, where you could change the, uh, the sensors and so on in it, but it didn't garner much favour. Uh, but for a little camera like this, uh, this is just uh, excellent. So the pros on that, as I mentioned, is the uh, modularity. Um, the sensor uh, width that uh, the angle of view here is uh, 14 uh, mil full frame equivalent. Perhaps a little bit too wide uh, from what I would prefer it to be. I would prefer something maybe like an 18 mil or so, but the 14 uh, is, is reasonable. Um, I think the other versions are about 16 uh, mil full frame equivalent angle of view, so um, you know, take it as it is. Uh, the software that comes with it um, is pretty good. Uh, it's quite slow uh, to operate, or slow to process, I should say. Um, but uh, what it does, it does very well. The uh, stabilisation uh, software, or the, the connection that it has with the uh, IMU uh, details that it, or data that it reads, uh, produces very, very smooth shots. It's virtually like uh, working with a gimbal, uh, and that's been talked about a lot in the uh, YouTube videos and so on. And it is true; it does work very, very well. Um, the quality, as I said, uh, is excellent. Enables me to sort of crop in, uh, zoom in quite a lot. Uh, change the aspect ratios without losing uh, uh, any real quality. I mean, uh, it'll go down to you know two and a half k, four k without any drama, and uh, is absolutely usable uh, in a different aspect ratio. Um, I won't put any examples at the moment uh, because, as I said, the lockdowns and the weather. But uh, I'll be following up and uh, talking about uh, what it can do uh, once things sort of get more stable around here. The uh, flat video profile that it provides is also really good. Um, unlike uh, a lot of the action cams, what they do is they just provide very uh, bright colours, uh, overly sharpened because you can adjust the sharpening down as well. Uh, it would be nice if you could actually get a log profile in here, but uh, that might be asking a little bit too much. But uh, the image quality from that perspective is quite good. It's quite malleable. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it to uh, make it look really good. Battery life uh, is not too bad, it's not too shabby at all. I shot at uh, the full 5.3K resolution, 24 frames per second, and it gave me 70 minutes on uh, one charge. So uh, I think that's pretty respectable for a camera like this. It didn't overheat, and uh, I had no glitches. I actually ran the, uh, the full 49 gigabyte uh, video through Resolve to, check, to, to uh, basically check to see whether there were any uh, glitches and so on nothing whatsoever it actually uh, came through absolutely perfect so uh, that's quite uh, promising as well uh, something that uh, a lot of people I, I have heard that they say it overheats and uh, uh, won't record past maybe 20 or 30 minutes or so uh, this just kept going and going and going i don't know whether the alloy cage the small rig cage makes a difference with uh, heating but it didn't feel even warm to the touch at the uh, when the battery actually died so that's pretty good the uh, camera also has voice control um, it works uh, especially when I use it with the uh, the Rode wireless go and I'll talk about uh, using that uh, shortly um, the, and it actually even recognizes uh, the rather uh, awkward Australian accent so it does work quite well the only problem I found with it is that when I do a stop start uh, voice recording uh, or voice control two times in a row the camera goes and shuts down got no idea it was repeatable uh, I did about three or four times, and uh, always on the on the second uh, uh, stop recording uh, command, the camera just shut off, and I had to actually physically turn it back on. So that's a bit of a failure. Um, I don't know why that's happening, but uh, I've actually uh, ordered a uh, remote control for it, the GPS remote. That's on its way from the US because it's the only place where I could uh, uh, find it at a reasonable price. Uh, that was from the Amazon uh, uh, Com US site. Uh, everybody in Australia wanted uh, uh, arm and a leg and whatever for it, and I don't know why. And I can't find the, uh, the, the new remote anywhere, which is the little one that goes onto a steering wheel or whatnot. Um, that would have been preferable, uh, but that's uh, what I could get. And uh, what else have we got? Yeah, so those sort of features that I mentioned, the detractors with the voice control and that, I don't really consider them to be 
uh, so much of cons. Um, it's maybe just something with it they work, but there, there are a couple of little issues with it. Uh, cons in my view are things that are just should have been done better and uh, need improvement. Um, the first one I, I came to mind as soon as I saw it, got the package and opened it, uh, was the cage. Um, that is just utterly useless. I believe that they have a second cage which has uh, cold shoes mounts on it and so on. But uh, the one that came with it has got a uh, nothing but a GoPro mount on it, a fixed one. Um, and so the first thing I did uh, when I received it and unpackaged it was bought the uh, small rig cage which came in a couple of days which is great. Uh, it's excellent because it's got cold shoe uh, spots on uh, top of the side. Um, I've got a little cold shoe small rig one on there uh, as an additional accessory. And uh, it's got uh, quarter 20 mounts uh, throughout and also at the bottom so I can put a uh, Arca Swiss mount on the bottom where you can put any sort of mount that you want to use but it does have the GoPro mounts which actually flip out uh, so that they're not, you. if you don't need them, you don't have to use them. You can actually use a quarter 20 screw mount on the bottom. Very intelligent design for a camera like this. Um, so that uh, was something I think uh, for people who want to do underwater work and all the rest because that's what the uh, supplied cage is for. It apparently seals and locks the the uh, unit together better but I have no intention of going underwater so uh, other than getting it maybe wet in rain or so on and it's good enough for that so uh, I don't need that cage but I did find it a bit disappointing being so basic uh, so that's a uh, uh, an issue that I thought was a bit of a con. Now the real issue that I have which I think is a, a major de deficiency is the lens protector that goes over the lens. Uh, it's designed obviously to be waterproof but uh, what I find really, really disappointing is there's no filter thread on the front. If it had had a filter thread, then you could have put a uh, uh, little adapter on there and added ND filters, whatever you wanted to, other uh, better protecting filters and so on onto it, but you can't. And there are no accessories available. If they made an accessory that was just, say, a filter adapter, that would be great. And given the understanding that once you use something like that, it's no longer waterproof, it doesn't matter. Um, you're buying it on the premise that it's not going to make the camera waterproof and there are a hell of a lot of people who use this and have no intention of taking it into the water. So providing an adapter that had filter threads on it would be great. Um, I've tried, I've had a look at putting a, uh, uh, a filter without a lead glass on it and I'm still working on that so I can actually glue it onto there and actually use that to adapt filters on it. I've got some ND filters by uh, Freewell uh, but they're not always going to be used. When I'm in the vehicle and that where it's darker I'd rather have a clear filter on there and in some cases at night time and so on uh, I'd rather have something in there protecting the uh, the lens in a different way so I'm not really uh, happy with the way that they provided that. There was no reason why they couldn't have extended that out a little bit more and given you a filter thread of about 42 or 46 mil, uh, whatever it is um, and you can't buy any accessories that uh, replace it with something like that so I think that is one thing that really should be considered even if say Freewell made something like that because they've got all the designs for attaching the lens allow you to choose what you want to put on there make that it larger if you want it so you can put on big filters so that the uh, very wide angle lens doesn't be yet um, but that would be great the other thing that I think would be really nice is if the camera actually had a uh, three and a half mil input I know that it sort of makes it more awkward uh, because of the uh, the way they have it weather sealed. I've taken the little door off that's in there uh, that takes the SD card or the micro SD card and the USB-C port. The only way you can put uh, audio is using a USB-C adapter that plugs in and then the audio adapter goes into the then So it could be a microphone or a wireless uh, unit like I uh, predominantly use. Uh, but it would have been nice if that, there was an ability to uh, put in a 3.5mm uh, th plug directly. Uh, it could be just a technical issue as far as space goes, I don't know. Uh, but that's one sort of kind of deficiency, especially because if I want to do long recording, I could be powering the battery at the same time through the uh, USB port and having audio if there were two separate uh, ports for it. So that would have been nice. And uh, another con that I think is there, yeah, I've got a little software uh, issue in there that every so often the camera just reverts to stills mode uh, when it's turned on or off or you do something with it. I really think that the, what the camera needs is a upgrade to the firmware or the software so that you can select it to be either a video camera or a stills camera. Now I think most people who buy these small cameras uh, for action work are going to be doing video almost 99% of the time. 
Um, I think it really does need uh, a setting in there that you can go and say, only do video. So you make a conscious choice that it does that and never then defaults to a, a stills mode because that is so painful because you always got to check to make sure that it is still in video mode uh, because some actions that you do, and I don't know which ones they always are, um, it just reverses into a, a, a stills camera. And to me, that's absolutely dumb. Um, it should stay set in what you want it to be. So that, and I believe that could be done. So that's not an impossible task. It's just a matter of uh, looking at the software and, and providing an update that allows you to make it uh, one or the other. Um, and maybe you have a setting in there that you can ch change it to stills if you want to, or extract the still from a, uh, a video clip. But uh, I really, really would like it to be so that I know it's always on video mode. Um, Another thing is, yeah, the other thing I sort of would 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 like, and they, I, they were the sort of the cons that I've got really. So it's not a great deal, um, and so yeah, the voice command, the stills, the adapter, they're really the only cons. It doesn't detract from the operation of the camera though. They're sort of personal preferences that. Uh, I would feel better or happier with the camera itself if they were there. A lot of people might find that not a problem, but to me they just sort of seem to be uh, a bit of a negative uh, feature, uh, but not dramatic. I certainly wouldn't uh, say because of those, don't even consider the camera. Um, the features, the benefits that it has far outweigh those uh, few minor sort of uh, cons that I pointed out. Now what I'd like to see I'd like to see a few more uh, options for aspect ratios rather than the, just the traditional 16 uh, to 9. Um, I don't see there's any reason why it couldn't do it in camera. Um, saves you cropping uh, in uh, post. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier and uh, you can actually then sort of get a better idea of what you're seeing. Even though the screen in the back is quite small, uh, you can sort of uh, see what goes in there. And just talking about the screen, there's probably another con that I didn't really talk about was the app that comes with it is actually quite good. It enables you some good control and so on with the camera, but it's frustrating because the image that's displayed on the uh, the phone is only available in portrait mode, so it's a narrow, wide view, uh, which doesn't give you all that much more screen space than what you get on the back of the camera itself. Well, it is a bit larger, but nothing significant. Uh, I don't know why you can't self-rotate and so that takes up the full size of the uh, your phone screen so you can actually get a really good view of uh, what, what it's doing and how it's working. The actual connection works very well. There's no I've had no glitches as far as the the uh, Bluetooth wireless connection goes but it is frustrating being able to only see the image in uh, portrait mode on the uh, phone. So that's, that's to me is kind of dumb. I don't know why that was done because other apps uh, will, will flip the, car, the view around and fill the screen up. This one just doesn't seem to do that. Um, what I'd be able to like to see is uh, a lot more spare parts available, or accessories available for it. Like I said, the filter adapter uh, attachment uh, instead of that. Um, I don't don't know why, and I've heard a lot of uh, talk about uh, trying to find parts for it. If somebody uh, damages something, uh, like their cage and that, it's very hard to get parts. Um, I've gone on the Insta site, and there's almost nothing available there, which is a bit strange being a modular camera. You would think that there would be those sorts of things readily available. And for that matter too, the remote controls in Australia, um, not easy to find. Uh, the new one certainly not, so it's been advertised everywhere, but can't even see anyone selling it yet, so that's a bit strange. Um, I would like also, as the minor sort of thing, when this camera takes a, a recording, it takes two recordings, uh, low quality and a high quality. The low quality is designed to be transmitted to the phone so that you can do your Instagrams or whatever it is that you want to immediately send stuff off. It's a, about a 44 uh, kilobyte uh, file or megabyte file, I can't re quite re recollect. Whereas with the high resolution one, the full one, it's about 10 or 100 times uh, bigger. So there's a huge difference, but it creates two files, so you've got to be constantly aware of that. And then when you download them, you just delete all the uh, ones you don't want. And it'd be nice to have a little setting in there where you can just say, don't record a second uh, low quality one, just do the main, main one. Um, so it'll save you a little bit of storage space. Uh, not a huge deal uh, in the scheme of things, but it's just another file that's got to be sitting there that you're not going to use. Well, I'm not going to use, and I think a lot of other people probably won't use it. Only those who need to be uh, instantly uh, telling the world what they're doing need to have the low quality one available for the phone. Uh, 
Another one which I would really like to have in here is uh, option for a shutter angle. Uh, you can go into manual settings and set uh, shutter speeds and things like that, but from a video uh, user's perspective, I would like to have the shutter angle option in there. Give you a little bit more flexibility with your, your things. At the moment, I've just been using it in full auto mode, and I'm going to keep doing that for a while uh, until I'm sort of confident whether that's sufficient um, or whether I need to go into manual mode and uh, shoot manually. Um, the problem with manual mode is you've got to go through the scroll through the little screen so uh, it can be a pain if you want to do rapid changes so I've been sitting in manual mode but uh, I wouldn't mind some more video camera features being put into it and uh, shutter angle is just one of those things that can be a benefit at times especially if you're using uh, ND filters and so on it'll adjust uh, for, for all of that or frame rate changes and things like that so that's uh, one thing I would like to see um, what I wouldn't mind seeing also is a uh, uh, an extension cable sort of module um, imagine because this comes apart it would be really sort of uh, interesting and uh, uh, effective if you could put a little adapter in uh, place of where the sensor is and attach that to say an extension cable so you could have say the camera in uh, inside your vehicle but the lens element and the, the imaging element outside of the vehicle so you're not actually putting the whole thing out there you're only putting a small module well that would give you the opportunity of placing this camera into numerous little areas uh, if you could do that and I don't see any reason why it couldn't be done um, because it's just a connector so making a module that connects on to uh, in, in interfaces between it with a cable uh, would possibly be a useful uh, feature for a lot of people and the other thing that I would like uh, I think would be good is if instead of the battery module itself that sits in there they uh, provided a dummy battery with a USB connection that say came out the front because if it's in a cage like this just in the front there is probably where the USB cable would have to go and that means that if uh, you're using this on a uh, any sort of long-term uh, recording with audio and so on you could connect that up into a USB-C power source, have your audio connected in there and run the camera for as long as the memory card will last. So that would be a great little feature um, so that you could run it off a power pack or whatever you want. So instead of having the extended battery pack, which won't fit in the cage here, you could actually use a power bank uh, or whatever, uh, even mains power, to power the camera for extended periods of time. So there's a couple of little things that uh, I think there's pros and cons to the camera. Overall, um, highly recommended. It really is a good camera. And as I said, I will be putting up uh, some video of it uh, in due course, um, but I just haven't had the ability to do it at the moment. And I wanted to sort of cover the camera itself um, before I sort of really get into it and uh, become more familiar with it, because it could be several months before I can be so confident enough to talk about uh, how I'm using it and so on. Now, with the, uh, the accessories that I've got, um, I'm using my Rode uh, wireless go on on the unit and I have it the receiver sort of connected to the side of the camera and then that goes plugs into the USB to 3.5mm connector on the side. I'm still struggling to find a cable that's uh, the right length. Uh, you cannot find anything uh, that actually fits, uh, reaches perfectly. It's either too short or way too long. Um, but uh, that's what I'm using uh, to get audio and the audio quality through the wireless go units is actually really good um, it's as good as what you're sort of hearing me talk now so I've got no issues with that at all the other option that I have is with the little uh, setting or the little cold shoe extension that I've got there if I want I can put a small Rode uh, microphone or any brand of small microphone onto the side like that uh, if that's what you want to record with uh, but I find that the wireless goes work uh, as well as one of these depending where you want to put it in the other feature I've got is I've got a little uh, video light that connects onto there and that sort of allows me to illuminate inside the car when I'm driving um, it gets a bit too dark in there I could just turn this on and this provides a bit of uh, uh, extra light to the uh, to the interior so that uh, you can balance out the exter exterior lighting and the inter internal lighting uh, quite nicely this little uh, Moin uh, light as it's called is a bit like a uh, Luma cube or Loom cube uh, not as quite as powerful it's about uh, 100 uh, lux at uh, 30 centimeters or something like that compared to 150 with the Loom cube so the, the ratios are about the same whether I'm getting the figures right or wrong 
the little adapter that comes with it um, is extremely thick so uh, when you've got that set to its most highest setting and you put this on like that it actually drops the light so much that it's equal to its lowest setting so I don't use it uh, it's just there as a protector and uh, that thing comes off and I just use it more or less like that uh, so it works quite well it's, it's, it's a reasonably powerful little light for uh, close uh, shooting and uh, close shooting means that uh, you don't go any closer than 90 centimeters with this camera because that's as close as it'll focus uh, which is about arm's length but uh, in the vehicle uh, it's a perfect location on the windscreen for uh, for the camera and what I do is I've got a modified uh, ram mount uh, suction cup which I've had around for a long time for a tablet put a little ball uh, head on there and what happens is that then screws onto the top quarter 20 mount and it goes onto the windscreen of the camera and it stays on there really well regardless of the fact that I've got a fair bit of weight on there this ram mount uh, suction cup uh, beats any suction cup that I've ever had for a uh, dash cam or anything like that um, driving around on this on bumpy roads and so forth it just doesn't move so that's actually a really really handy feature that I've got for internal camera uh, use and as I said with the uh, Arca Swiss mount on the uh, bottom of it now I'll put that onto my bull bar mount and uh, that can just sit on front of the uh, bull bar while I'm driving and uh, capture action uh, sort of stuff from that perspective as well so I've got ability to very quickly have take two points of view uh, when I do our trips and uh, as far as the waterproofing and weatherproofing goes with the microphone like that uh, if it's raining I wouldn't be doing it uh, if it's not raining then that's that's fine uh, because uh, dust I don't think it'd be that big a problem uh, getting in there uh, but uh, it's not weatherproof without the little cover on there which is a bit of an awkward uh, thing I've removed it from there because of the fact that uh, it just gets in the way I can't put the little cold shoe adapter on there it's awkward to put the uh, connector in there because it just wobbles around and gets in the way so I just decided to take it off so basically um, that's my little crash cam as I call it rather than action cam um, highly recommended it really is a uh, very very good camera the quality uh, that comes out of it as I've already pointed out is in my view excellent um, it's one of the, the best image qualities I've seen with the one inch sensor it makes a big big difference versus the two-thirds that are found on uh, the normal uh, action cameras like the GoPros and so on so something worth considering I'll put up a uh, shortly uh, another uh, closer up with the accessories so you can actually see how it all comes together it may not be too easy to see uh, from uh, this perspective so that's uh, basically uh, all I want to say about this camera sorry for the length of it um, but I think there were quite a few issues I've left out a lot of points that I've already covered by uh, other YouTube videos as far as what it can do and so forth uh, you can find out that and I don't want to repeat uh, what's already been done ad infinitum so uh, basically on that note uh, I'll call it cheers